Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second presentation for the IT Confidence 2021. Uh, today, <clears throat> my speech is about the stress, <clears throat> about the need for historical data, for benchmarking data. And uh, we need absolutely to take into account the real data because, for instance, we are passing this period hoping it will uh, uh, be closed in the shorter way uh, as possible. And uh, skipping my bio sketch yet done, the goals for this presentation are these three, <coughs> mostly. And so it's important absolutely to discuss how to stimulate the data gathering in our own organizations and to use DevOps uh, that you know it's a very good approach in order to shorter production times, but also been uh, derived also for, uh, from ITIL and other service management methodologies, also to stimulate the collaboration between the dev and the ops, developers and operational people, but DevOps can be also read in another way. And uh, the very interesting way that we can uh, uh, apply here in this presentation, in this short talk, uh, in these 40 minutes, we have to discuss uh, this topic together. Mostly uh, is to think the dev as <clears throat> uh, the business and the ops as the IT working on a project and using benchmarking tips as well as the ISBSG or the ISBEC as we usually uh, name our association from uh, quite 25 years is a very good way and sources in order to understand which kind of productivity we should apply and why in order to estimate the right production time, delivery times and costs and prices as previously discussed also with Harold in terms of Agile. I started my discussion, I start my discussion from the reading of some papers, some articles on the web from the Harvard Business Review, from Forbes and other blogs on the, the internet. Because you know that from uh, beginning of last year, the productivity working at home, most of us, uh, there is a larger discussion. The productivity is going uh, up because you, you do not have to travel. The productivity uh, as a gap, uh, uh, but going uh, on the bottom to, uh, is, uh, is worse than ever because we, we have a different uh, working situation or what else. And so the starting point is this one. And you can find that kind of questions also looking very funny strips as well as Dilbert that many of, know, of you uh, probably know. And uh, some questions arise also to my mind because uh, these points are very, very important daily to any uh, to any one of, our, of us. And it's more and more important to understand which could be the right drivers in order to do not confuse apple and oranges. Because often there is this kind of simplification in contracts and bids in the business. And uh, since the DevOps can be read not only look into uh, the production side as initially started in that community that can be scaled also to speak about business not against but collaborating more and more with the IT or the DevOps team it's important to understand period by period how to introduce or how to work differently with benchmarking data filtering with for the right drivers and filter and so Another uh, very interesting point to discuss in these minutes is uh, the way to calculate the PDR or <clears throat> the productivity because often contracts do not place this formula very clearly in uh, stated in, uh, in papers. And so one thing is to assume that productivity means outputs uh, over effort but apply to software projects or ICT projects, we need absolutely to go into the formula in order to understand a little bit better what we can measure and what kind of data we can derive in order to derive important information for improve our estimates. 
DevOps uh, um, from many, many people seems to be something about automation, but it's not completely true because DevOps started before <clears throat> trying to resolve, and this is a paper eventually you can download from the internet, from the Axelos.com website that is the owner from IT and many other soft service and governance methodologies. Uh, this kind of approach started uh, looking to two different groups, the dev and the ops groups, uh, separated by a so-called wall of confusion. And so a dev people was typically some people producing the design or the realization of the building for a solution. And the ops group, a, people, uh, a group of people supporting in uh, the ops space, uh, a software, an IT system. And this wall of confusion separated these two people with many, many incidents, with many, many complaints during the operational phase. DevOps started mostly for putting into a higher and better contact the two groups trying to overlap their effort and contribution. The Ops with the Dev and the Dev with the Ops into different phases. This can be the typical software uh, uh, service life cycle phases according to IT version 3 and uh, this is typically the five uh, DevOps uh, values starting from culture so DevOps is mostly uh, something about a better organization that just then can improve uh, the performances using automation but also being lean more and more trying to keep out some wastes and here is our pillar we are measurement people we are people trying to measure to gather data <clears throat> and then the other pillar for closing the and to to build our house that can be the devops house is to share information to have a better collaboration <clears throat> that can mean concretely day by day to reduce time cost and then to have more affordable prices for a customer and so devops produces produced along the years this community also a way to measure the maturity of an organization according to these practices and so instead of speaking about a devops uh, measurement maturity model the typical language in this community is to speak about the first, the second, and the third way. And the title of the presentation is just this one, <clears throat> because we would like to go over a continual experimentation and learning to improve, <clears throat> to be prepared for failure. And this means the higher maturity and capability level that typically an organization can have. <clears throat> and so, I'm mentioning this uh, higher maturity because you know in our community that ISBSG was the driver for this uh, series of uh, benchmarking standards. And here there is the link if you want to know more on the ISO website. But many of us are measurement people from many, many years. And you know that the measurement process has been stated yet from 1999 with this standard, the 15939, evolved and confirmed over time. And the common point is to gather your own data. The point is another one. <clears throat> In contracts, and this is an Italian bid, and that's online, so you can access it online. There are, even if it's written in Italian, you can take a translator. Often uh, a function point, as in many contracts, is just money is not uh, dealt as a technical measure in order to derive effort, cost and prices. But the bad news is that often there is this kind of sentence that any kind of service has a, a, an average of productivity, no matter about the technology, no matter about the size, the context of the organizational kind of organization is dealt with this software product with a number. And the point is to understand from here, or also in European contracts, you know that the EU-LISA is a part of the European community. And recently, in 2020, there was a large bid involving many, many people <coughs> around Europe. And here, for instance, the information is to 
consider in the bid not the productivity but its opposite formula that is the project delivery rate but here also there is a flow from a measurement viewpoint because to understand or to measure and, and uh, the pdr only for development and testing phase uh, if it is not clearly stated what a function point whatever the, the the kind of function point is but cosmic nesma fisma mark ii or other non-standard methodologies should be clearly uh, established dealt uh, told what is in or what is out the creation of a function point so the isbsg data are very very important as you know and this is at the conference the ISBG conference from nine, year, nine years. We started in 2013 in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, and uh, next year uh, this conference will reach its 10th year and ISBSG its 25th year of, uh, from the creation date. This uh, DND development and enhancement repository recently, as Harold said before, was uh, prepared and uh, you can buy it from us uh, in this uh, version 2021 and about effort three different definition of effort in many hours and uh, there is a split in this section of the uh, data gathering of the, the spreadsheet you can buy with more than uh, 10,000 projects there is the split per main project phase activities but this is the improvement point maybe that uh, we'll uh, discuss during the presentation it could be in, of interest to discuss also how to split effort from a different criteria that can be the nature of a user requirements because you know that any kind of function points is the sizing only of FUR of a functional user requirement, not only of non-functional user requirement, and not only about the project requirements. And another attention point we have observed from many, many years is that many projects have an effort unrecorded and so not distributed along at least these software lifecycle phases. And so this kind of information having an overall number about the effort can be useful for determining the nominal, nominal productivity that does mean function point under over the overall project effort but it doesn't allow if we do not have a specific effort split by a user requirement type for determining for instance that can be very useful for instance for some information for the agile estimates as harold said before a strict functional productivity and another very interesting uh, element of complexity that can improve our estimates is the quality of data and so 25010 is the standard about the software quality but this is Another very important element from uh, ISO from 2008 dealing with the quality of data. And so it's important also to have uh, uh, the combination, the right combination for your information system, systems about software, but also the data read and managed by a software. So this kind of information can be introduced maybe and hopefully in the next uh, ISBG repository information, but it's uh, very, very important that the, our community, the ICT world will share this information. Otherwise, no more data, sorry, uh, to be introduced with value in our repository. Uh, let's come back to 2010. I started to write some thoughts on my website about productivity. And the very important information is this one. Which kind of formula do we have to deal with, uh, to deal with for calculating productivity? And typically, all contracts refer in an implicit way to this one. But the point is to understand that eventually, no matter the kind of non-functional sizing unit you are going to, to use, here I, in a paper, I wrote about the snap points, but you can uh, use it here for the non-functional side 
anything you, you prefer, but what we should go and uh, uh, obtain in the next year should be a refinement of the initial formula, try to have specific productivities, trying to understand which could be the right uh, sizing driver for non-functional size for a product, and uh, but in this moment it doesn't exist with a consensus, a worldwide consensus, a project size uh, formula and the unit of measure for the project organization of tasks. And so from this year, I started to create what we are calling from by 10 years, the ABC schema. And it was written, this paper, if you want to, to read something more, here on uh, the IFPAG metric news uh, newsletter, August 20, uh, 2012. The idea is very simple because we are dealing from many, many years in understanding and sizing user requirements, but you can have at least the three parts, FURs and FRs and other requirements. And so we can have the potentially also for agile, for any kind of projects, at least the three different kind of combination, a whole combination, including all the tasks from these three sides, the three requirement types. We can have also zero function point requirements. And we can have also in Agile, for instance, in the first and in the last sprints, only tasks dealing with organizational tasks, as well as the project management once, measurement, quality assurance, the setup for an environment, and so on. That does mean zero function point, but also zero size, also for the non-functional product size. And another very simple but effective information is that we should always size something, establishing a quantity. The quantity will, will lead to determine uh, an effort. The effort could lead to determine cost and prices. Productivity is the central uh, criteria in order to estimate more and more. Better uh, refining uh, just uh, an estimation by analogy or by experience, because uh, quantity divided by an historical productivity could help you in determining the effort for your next project. And so this kind of information was also kept in the IFPAG Cosmic Non-Functional Requirement Taxonomy written three years ago. And you can download this other paper confirming what we call the ABC classification exactly in this way. So uh, six years passed for also from this paper, and we are uh, we could ask how to determine this uh, effort split by the ABC schema. Very simple. Imagine to be a project manager. Imagine to have that kind of style for determining your uh, your Gantt uh, chart, but uh, you can move from here to that refined way. And what initially I wrote in this paper as organizational NFR, FUR, right now can be, uh, could be named, labeled as ABC. And in this way, you can also have your own stats in your organization, trying to understand which could be the percentage also with a pie chart for any project, a group of groups of project, or more important by functional domain, because the split of the effort for a data warehouse or business intelligence project is not exactly the same effort distribution that in a management information system or in a web-based project. So it's very, very important to understand the formula, because otherwise we are going to arrive to calculate or to impact on a new productivity paradox. Many of us know that the term from a Kevin Jones paper written in the late 80s, but the productivity paradox at the time was to understand the value of uh, using function points with every kind of, instead of lines of code. Right now, I'm calling the productivity as the people typically call it in contracts as the nominal productivity, because looking into the formula, this is a product uh, size of a uh, unit of measure just about functional requirements. But the effort is about another different and wider 
uh, sizable entity. There is the whole project, whole project. And so if we could split the effort also in benchmarking analysis into ABC effort, it can improve also our benchmarking analysis because to do uh, spending more effort for se on security or doing a better analysis from a measurement side, improve the effort, maintain constant sizing unit, the functional product sizing unit, but the algebraic effect is to calculate on your stats a lower nominal productivity. That's why I call it nominal, because it's not true. We are creating value, but using different effort that should have here on the upper part of the formula, different and other unit of measures dealing with this and this part. Otherwise, it would be, uh, it should be a paradoxical analysis. And the same, uh, because we are dealing and we are going to estimate the whole project scope not only what is about function points. And the same analysis could lead also a paradox, a new paradox about costs, because typically in contracts also, when you have to deal with cost or price per function point, this is typically the overall cost for the whole project activities, including fixed and variable cost, or under over only the uh, one of the potential driver. And so it's very, very uh, dangerous to simplify too much that kind of analysis. Also, because in uh, over time, if we should consider also the, the more, more effect, the new technology about the productivity should lead to higher productivity. And the higher productivity could understand, could be explained also with a reduction of the, the unit cost, but for the project, and not, not only for a part of the project only, because we have to understand also that we are dealing with, not only with development project, but as we are calling with another classification called the one, two, three schema with project about development, operation and maintenance. And you know that maintenance according to ISO 14, 764, that is the maintenance process, uh, determine four different kinds of maintenance from 99. And so in a that project, we can have the functional, non-functional and project requirement, but in an operation project, only non-functional and organizational uh, requirement. But in a maintenance project, if we are going to look to the correction side, no function point, zero function point. And in the adaptive maintenance, there could be some function point, but imagine only to impact on this kind of requirements, zero function point, effort, the nominal productivity would be algebraically speaking equal to zero. Perfective does mean to do a refactoring of your code, zero function points. And so we have to deal and to cope and to join the ABC schema with the one to three schema. And this could explain better for our benchmarking analysis. But for, for those of you part of a customer organization, how to establish the right drivers for sizing in your bids. Because the point is this one, often we are dealing with a service management project, not with a, a software development project only. It depends. And so it's important to clarify that using, for instance, ISBSG data, and this is a recent instruction for Java projects, for development projects using the IFPAG metric with that number of projects, it would uh, seem that the uh, correlation uh, between size and effort could be not so low. And here on the algebraic side, this could be the nominal average or median productivity. And so uh, why it's important to use ISBG data? Because it can be a real view from worldwide projects from 25 years about the right uh, fork, about a maximum a minimum productivity, about a certain technology with a plenty of drivers. So please 
use access based data because <clears throat> it could be very interesting because in a DevOps approach, we should be collaborating each other. The dev and the ops, the business and the IT, a customer and a provider, different kind of looking to the way to provide the value for the final users. Because this point, the point is this one, looking into this analysis, for instance, using a, a linear regression formula, this could be the driver, the effort, function points, and this is the impact, this number, this one, the higher, the higher the impact of non-functional requirements and project requirements. But in a simpler way, this could be the question. For a very, in a very simple analysis, somebody could take, could affirm that a lower, a, a low R square value means simply the project is not performant. But if you have an outlier, it not necessarily mean if you want to understand a little bit more that the project is not performant. Probably there could be, not necessarily, but that could be also in place this other option. That does mean that there could be in that project many other effort, much effort devoted on the B and C side. And this is very interesting. If you could apply another tool that we created uh, five years ago called the planning game. A very simple template, you can create your own one. And uh, for instance, uh, you can hear the example is using function points, but you can also use this kind of template without function points. In which way? Imagine to have a project using that formula for productivity. Productivity is a quantity under an effort, time uh, an effort in the project. Imagine that this could be the productivity for a certain technology. Imagine to derive uh, using applying this formula, this effort in many days, so it remains in Italian, Giorni Uomo, and to uh, repropose eventually as ISBSG uh, suggests uh, in a correct way to use uh, many hours and not many days uh, in order to be more and more precise in your estimates. And imagine to have initially that amount of uh, many hours to be put here in the white cells. So the grid is a matrix put in, in columns, the software of the project life cycle phases or main activities, project management, quality assurance, measurement, release and operation side, analysis and design, build, construction and test. You can insert here the columns you prefer. But the addition we create in this grid is to split this effort also by the ABC schema. And when you are going to allocate, you have to decide how to insert these 2,000 and more hours in the grid, arriving to have zero hours in your backlog, ideal effort backlog, you will derive the distribution by the ABC schema per requirement. That does mean a series of questions. The productivity, the nominal productivity could be two function points per main day, but the, the strictly functional productivity that could be in some kind, in some analysis in the agile world, just to understand the DevOps uh, team, how uh, much is productive is of course uh, higher because here you have only to understand uh, how many function point only on this effort uh, for the A role. That does mean only the hours needed to strictly, technically speaking, uh, we need to, to spend for creating a function point. Analysis, design, build and testing, but only for functional requirements. Because another part uh, could be the second role, the B role, and it will determine, for instance, the effort for a non-functional productivity. And if we could have also another sizing unit for the project size, this could be the effort only for the C role, that does mean the project related activities that do not have an impact on the product size, logical size. So some question for those of you paying or establishing contracts per function point, 
This could be the real effort covered and paid by a function point. Another very interesting point in our benchmarking practice is better man hours, better man days. Another point, because there is a lot of confusion between productivity and PDR. PDR is the opposite of productivity. Productivity is the opposite formula than PDR. So please be very clear about formulas because otherwise numbers explode over you. And another very important point is this one. Because if we do not deal with the, uh, this distribution, we can have several problems. Also about the cost analysis. <coughs> Ten minutes to go and to close. Uh, can you see my my uh, effort uh, counter here? Time counter here. Try to to write uh, your answer in the chat room, in the chat box. Can you see the the time remaining for my presentation? Yes or no? We can see because that. It's perfect because it's very important for people as you and me trying to determine productivity. Productivity is not only size, but size under effort. And we have also to be very, very strict about the effort analysis and split. So let's go on. I have tried also to understand, and that was one of the initial questions, if a certain period in time that could be right now the COVID period could have an impact using benchmarking data or your own historical data, eventually uh, on productivity, nominal productivity and all the other uh, types of productivity we can determine. So I started to take initially the whole set of uh, 174 projects in Java. And then I try to understand eventually with different chunks of projects if this productivity was a little bit different. And for instance, uh, there is a difference because, uh, and there will be a difference also in the next three years because right now the project kept in this repository <clears throat> are till 2020. For looking the whole effect, eventual effect of the COVID period, the pandemic period over productivities, as stated eventually or, or discussed in the journal papers I introduced before, can be, could be seen during the next couple of years. But this is the kind of analysis we should do. And the interesting thing is that all the uh, very interesting information that many of you knows that Java is a particular programming language that even if the project is uh, as a, a functional size of 21 function points or more than uh, 7,000 400 function points, the productivity, even if here the number is a little, is written in a little way with a little font, is very close always to one function point point per day. And so it's important to do uh, avoid mixed generic productivity levels because it's not a question of prices. But in a DevOps approach, the most important and in an agile project, as Harold said before in his first presentation, a DevOps group or an agile group should be time boxed. And so to uh, do not understand the right productivity, Imagine here also in this period, the overall period, and to put that in Java, we should reach. Um, if you do not have very uh, verified historical data that the business and the IT, the customer and the provider could share for being collaborating, collab uh, collaborative parts in a project, could be very risky for the good success of a software project, because otherwise the risk, if we are going to skip the correct filters, or if we are going to skip some particular periods that could lead to not good productivity levels, very different because for instance, in the next two years for the COVID side effects, and we do not isolate these projects from our benchmarking analysis, it could be very, very dangerous for the business, for the provider, but mostly from the users, because the users will receive 
lower quality projects. In Italy, we produce uh, several uh, papers. Uh, sorry for uh, those of you not coming from Italy, but you can also translate this paper on this uh, ICT uh, journal. And we discuss it briefly, this point. Uh, often the effort uh, mostly comes from the A side, but on the cost side, this does mean that this is the daily cost for a programmer. The B effort is a little bit lower in a dev project, but it does mean that a specialist, the DBA, a system integrator, does cost a little bit more daily than a programmer. And a measurer people, a measurement expert people, a project manager, a bid manager, a commercial people has less, hour, less hours spent in a project, but his daily cost is higher than the other two. And the effort distribution for management information system, web project, data warehouse project is different. So on the cost and price side, we do have to understand that can uh, to have a price per function point it's not a very good idea because we are not producing something repeatable we can repeat and use uh, software engineering techniques but any project is pure craftsmanship and uh, another point to uh, introduce in our analysis comes from uh, service management many of you knows ITIL many of you knows uh, COVID, other governance methodology, and uh, the point is this one. What ITIL says from many, many years, that is value. Value is the summation of utility plus warranty. What a service and its component, like so software uh, components, should uh, do, but the, its warranty stands in the way this project do that and in the how much side. So it does mean also its measurable side. And from uh, those of us coming from the software management field, it does mean, and here we can also uh, insert the project C side, it does mean that value comes from the summation, not only of the functional side units and uh, value, but also joining availability, capacity, continuity, security, and many other attributes, because value is more than what we can size and pay by a function point. The quality stands here, not only the software quality, also the data quality. And here, just a suggestion, because SNAP now recently, now in October, uh, is going to be officialized and here, there is the ISO web page about SNAP, but the good news is that SNAP is one of the non-functional side that sizes that uh, ISBSG is going to introduce in their repository. And here, if you go on that web page, and if you are one of the, the few ones right now would like also to submit non-functional sizing data, you can go here, you can go here, and please submit your data to ISBSG. This would, would allow the whole community to learn more and more about the non-functional side and the something outside the functional part of the project. And remember a very simple thing we do, we did in Rio de Janeiro in 2013. Snap is like snapping your fingers, but it's just one of the possible uh, non-functional sizing units. Let's go to the conclusion. I have one minute for closing my presentation. Please, these are the strong messages because often we could have to deal with zero function point enhancement and uh, it's better to introduce non-functional sizing unit more than going to discuss in a contract about how many uh, main days or main hours there could be on that for covering and paying eventually the non-functional sizing requirements. Another important thing is to introduce or to deeply analyze the year of the project and the depth type, because whatever the function point uh, sizing unit, uh, an enhancement project uh, will have often a lower productivity than a development project, because less elements, less base functional component typically will be counted in that kind of formulas. 
if Parker Cosmic, Mesma, Fisma, Mark II is the same thing. And anybody of you, if you want to uh, do a trial, can use your own data and you will uh, discover that is a, a simple real thing from ever. Planning to playing to the planning game could be a very simple way in your project, not in my necessarily in my own project, to split the effort by at least the two different criteria, and it can help to obtain a better distribution of effort, uh, leading also to a better cost and uh, price uh, analysis. Because otherwise, the risk is to set up or to receive a cost or a price that seems to be initially good, but going into the effort uh, distribution of effort and structure could be not absolutely feasible with the premises for a customer or also for a provider. But in a DevOps approach, because this presentation has this title, to go for the third way, it's very, very important to refine our productivity definition, to be very clear about the formulas uh, you have to deal with in your project to be very, very precise about also the unit of measure for your effort. Because if you work many, many hours more in a, in a day for those countries, for instance, as Italy, where typically the culture is to measure effort per man day, if I have to work typically eight hours and I have to spend nine, 10, 11 hours, my real productivity, unofficial productivity would be lower than expected. And next time I would need more time, more effort to, to produce something similar to my past projects. But if statistics, stats, internal and organization would continue to use mandates, uh, it, it can be another problem in estimation analysis. And so as Edward Denning, uh, one of the most known quality gurus said, if you do know uh, to ask a question, you will discover nothing. And our idea is just this one, to avoid that kind of situation, as Dilber said to his boss, because working permanently at home, as in like in this COVID-19 period, not necessarily doing a plenty of things could uh, explain something more. And the rabbit from uh, Harold is a slide, but also telling the same message for Goof Pisma, members so same messages please if you are going to uh, subscribe to one of our uh, gold member association you can receive also benefits and you will obtain of course uh, several versions free versions of the, uh, this data and you will have discounts eventually for buying this kind of data Thanks a lot. Sorry for the two minutes uh, out of the time.